Welcome back, Guardians. My name is Trams87. There are several tales, if you will, of cities out in the deep. In the deep part of the wilds, cities where the hopes of what remains of the human race have been gathered together. We know of the last city protected by the Traveler, but there are others. Bastions of civilizations hidden in dense forest, marshy swamps, or open plains. Where in the wilds are these beloved beacons of hope? Well, Guardians, there is one. Old Chicago, they call it, or what's left of it. Chicago is now a crumbling city surrounded by mushy, dense swamp water and plantation. It is a human city located on Earth. As its name implies, old Chicago may be from the golden age of humanity before the collapse. There is some degree of conflict on it as humanity tries to reclaim its former glory. The city is located in the middle of a big swamp. It is also where a guardian found the exotic pulse rifle graviton lance. Listen up then to this lore entry from the book, Ecdysis, titled Risen. It reads, On the day her ghost resurrects her, she asks him for a name, and he calls her Orin. He asks her for a name, and she calls him Gaul. Marrow deep instinct drives that decision. She could not declare its etymology if someone held a knife to her throat. Gaul explains that there is a settlement a few days walk to the east, that there is no road, and that the wilderness is regularly patrolled by roving aliens who will try to kill them both. As she speaks, Orin looks around. They are surrounded by a young forest, vivacious with birds and clouds of gnats. It is impossible to imagine that a deadly alien might be lurking somewhere nearby. But Gaul found her. Gaul knows more about the world than she does. She trusts him. She scavenges the leaf litter until she finds a fallen tree limb. Will this help? She asks him, testing its heft. He twists his wings, puzzled. Against the aliens, she elaborates. Oh, Cordius. He pretends to consider it. Then, no, probably not. They have guns. I see, she says. Though she doesn't, she breaks off the smaller branches, using her foot for leverage. Soon, she has a crude mace. It is heavy, slow and does not break when she tests it against a tree trunk. She doesn't know what the aliens look like. She does not know what guns are. She does trust Gaul, but she can't help thinking if an alien tried to attack her while she was armed. With a stick like this, she would have no trouble crushing its skull. They reach the settlement. It is smoldering cinder and ruin. Gaul frets about fission products, and acute radiation, so Orin lingers at a distance and studies what remains. A cat moves among the most distant rubble, hunting for mice. A tattered banner stirs in the breeze. She sees nothing more, so she ignores Gaul's warning and goes in for a closer look. She finds bodies, adults mostly, some children. There are little houses for big animals, but there are no big animals among the dead. How did this happen? She asks, overcome by grief for these charred strangers. Aliens, I doubt it. The fallen don't often use nuclear weapons. It ruins the land. My guess is that a warlord raided this place for its livestock and then set off a bomb. Why? Gaul gives a little shrug, bobbing in place. 
Why not? No one was here to stop them. Orin clenches her mace a little tighter. She feels nauseous. Can you tell when it happened? He runs the computations, not precisely. Less than 36 hours ago, I suppose. I should have walked faster, she mutters, and then bends over to be sick. You can't do that here, Gull interrupts anxiously. Stop, Orin, stop. You have radiation poisoning. If you're sick here, you'll die here. And then I'll have to resurrect you here, and you'll be sick and die again and again. You have to move. Come. I told you not to walk around here. Well, who is Orin, you ask? I'm afraid I'll have to let you figure that one out by yourself. But I'm sure some of you might recognize the name. As you can see, the wilds are a terrifying place where life runs a constant cycle of moving and stopping in a faint attempt to survive. Every single step you take could land you face to face with a warlord or something far worse. It can get real dicey out there in the wilds of Earth. <laughs> I know, I know. You're here for the good bits, for the juicy information. You want to know about old Chicago, the swamp-infested, gnat-biting, gloomy remnant of what we used to call a city before the Golden Age. All right, I'll tell you. Have a listen then to the lore entry from the armor piece Wild Hunt Vestment. It reads... I've studied enemies of the light, and I don't know what lured us to the ruin in old Chicago and killed all those guardians, but I know it was hunting us. The encampment was several days old, formed from a few dirty tents huddled around a handful of unpacked crates and two sealed ones. The entrance servitor had dimmed, and foul-smelling liquid spilled from punctures and rutted gnashes in its plating. Tyrion looked the machine over curiously. It was an oddity, this far from the shore, and to be left unprotected was even stranger. Toppled in the dirt, an ox spear Tip drew her eye to an open case of digging tools, high tensile strength line, and respiratory filters, and just beyond the wheezing captain. Tyrion scooped the spear from the ground and walked a few short steps to him. What name do you go by, Kerr of Drixis? Her elixir was of the shore, a crude form result of an elegant language diluted by sole domestic phrases and pronunciations. The captain thrashed and rolled on its back, snapping quills like kindling. It propped itself on raw, hewn, fleshy stubs to extend its reach and swiped at her with its single remaining arm. Froth spilled from its cracked mask and underneath, a broken section at the brow line, a maddened eye fixated on her. What's wrong with him? Shakto materialized at Tyrion's side. I don't know. Presenting physiology is fallen, but altered. Something in the ether? Whatever they called you, your life is mine now. The light bearer drove the arc spear into the captain's chest with one measured thrust. We'll keep doing this until he has no subordinates. He'll be forced to deal with us eventually. Tyrion swiped a spent ether canister from the captain and held it up to the light. Shakto. Looks clean to me, the ghost said after a focused scan. Tyrion tossed the canister to shatter on the ground and moved back to the unopened crates. She cracked off one of the lids with a spear 
and set both aside. Just short of a dozen full fragile vials containing delicate blue jostle within soft packaging, save a few with froth prelocating through worn seals. The ether swished like plasma fluid surf inside the glass. They wouldn't leave this much unattended. Shakto followed the dirt dragged trail back from the captain to the curve in the stony walls of the gully. The trail led him to a narrow separation in the rock face. Trin! It was enough space to contort her body through. Scrapes ran from the edges of the splint into a slithering dark tunnel. Trin took a stone from the ground and rolled it in her hands, coaxing condensed smoothness from it with palms of void light. She flicked the glowing sphere into the separation and watched it roll a few meters along a line before it skipped over the edge and fell steeply out of sight. You think it fell straight through the reef? I'd say no. That rope goes somewhere. Trin squeezed shallow breaths into her lungs with each shuffling step. It was all the stone pressure on her ribs would allow. She closed her eyes to keep instinctually panic in check and lurched forward with a final step to meet the precipice. The walls opened, her lungs filled. Line dangled beneath her feet. She grabbed the line and tested the solidity of the ground spike holding it in place. Shakto, I'm going down. Several meters deep in the darkness, buzzing, spelunking lights set a grisly scene aglow. Three vandals, two dregs, and a captain lay slain and lifeless. Some residual from arc blade cuts. Near the captain, two severed arms bled pools. A third arm, prosthetic, was pinned to an adjacent stone wall with a spear. Her breath trembled. She knew this violence. It was the only thing the pits had ever offered her. What did you find? Shakto's voice reverberated down the shaft, preceding his descent. So, here we got a glimpse of old Chicago, of the outskirts. Though it's not much, it would appear something mysterious is going on, but what? I guess we'll have to wait to find out. Until then, I hope you have enjoyed watching and listening to this video. Let me know if you enjoyed my southern draw. But for now, that's all. Feel free to give this video a like and feel free to subscribe and hit the bell notification to find out when my next lore video goes live. Remember that no matter what you're going through in life, there is a plan and a purpose for your life. And if I don't see you, Happy New Year, stay safe and Godspeed.